So now let's look at the quantum description of this problem. What's our Schrodinger equation? Time independent? What's our operator? Hamiltonian operator, h hat operating on psi gives you back the energy times psi. So that's your Schrodinger equation. And what's our kinetic energy operator? Negative h bar squared over 2 times the mass times the second derivative with respect to x plus what's our potential energy operator this time? It's not going to be zero now. So this is our kinetic energy plus potential energy operator. Just one half kx squared, remember? This potential energy is just a multiplicative operator. Operating on psi gives you E psi. All right. So when you solve that, okay, from here on we're not going to go into doing this derivation of all of these. We're just going to look at start looking at just the results. Okay. So uh, at this point in the course, you already have the idea of what what it takes. You solve a differential equation, you apply boundary conditions, you get the solution. So from here on, we're just going to be focusing on the results as it is applied to uh, specific systems, eventually we'll get to the hydrogen atom and then we'll look at the molecule. Right? So if you did solve this Schrodinger equation right here, what you'll find is that the energy is going to be quantized. And the quantization of energy is given by this formula, V plus one half times H nu. Okay, so this is a letter V, that's a quantum number, and nu here is the frequency of the oscillation. What is nu? What did we say nu was? 1 over tau. Now, was 2 pi nu was omega, right? And what was omega? Square root of k over m. So nu is just, you can write nu as 1 over 2 pi times square root of k over m. You can write it that way. So that's the allowed energies. And the wave function psi, all right? If you examine the solutions to this, okay? You'll find that uh, the wave functions generally have these characteristics right here. You have a normalization constant, n, and you have a polynomial in x, all right, and a Gaussian function. And that's why we talked about Gaussian functions earlier this semester, because that's the kind of function you see a lot. All right, so it's a product of, you can, Think of these wave functions, if you look at them, as a product of three terms. A normalization constant to make sure that the integral of psi squared over all space, so from negative infinity to positive infinity, that integral of psi squared is going to be equal to 1. Then you have a polynomial, okay, and a Gaussian. Now, the degree of the polynomial depends on the quantum number v. Now, the quantum number v is restricted. It can only be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, okay? so. This is different from the particle in a box where n equals 1, 2, 3, and so on. Uh, quantum number v can actually be 0, okay? So that's quantum number. Now, your polynomial term, if you examine the wave functions, you'll find that the polynomial term is an odd function if v is odd. In other words, when you write the polynomial out, you're not going to see even powers. It's all going to be odd powers of x. And if V is even, on the other hand, if you write out the polynomial, you're going to only see even powers of X. You won't see any odd powers of X. Now, the polynomial term here is what is known as a Hermit polynomial. Okay? And there's a specific formula for that. But we're not going to go into detail as, that's, as far as that's concerned. Uh, we're just going to focus on the big picture here, what the polynomial looks like. All right? And then the Gaussian function. Okay, would be e raised to the negative x squared. You can see there's a squared term there. So e to the negative x squared over 2 alpha squared, where alpha, this alpha here is h bar squared over mk raised to the power 1 fourth. Okay, or you can express it in terms of y. y is called a reduced variable. 
uh, y is x over alpha. And it's just going to be e to the negative y squared over 2. Okay? So that's what the function, that's a, that's a summary of the solution to the problem. Okay? So let's just examine these solutions and want to see what they imply. 